There is a beautiful math behind 3D computer graphics and we've already seen some examples on this channel. Let's continue this trend and talk about transformations in C++. We are going to implement rotating cube from scratch and just to demonstrate that you really don't need anything fancy to study the principles, it will be in ASCII and text mode again. Here are some fundamentals, but before that, hi! My name is Pavel, I work in game development and I'm a former graphics developer and researcher with a PhD in computer science. In 3D graphics, we work with a three-dimensional coordinate system where points are represented using X, Y, Z coordinates. The program implements this concept through a point 3D structure that encapsulates three floating point values corresponding to the X, Y and Z coordinates in 3D space. Similarly, for displaying content on a two-dimensional screen, we need a structure to represent points in a 2D space. The program uses a point 2D structure that not only contains X and Y coordinates, but also retains depth coordinate, the Z coordinate, which will be crucial for determining how objects are rendered with appropriate visual depth cues. Three-dimensional objects are typically represented as a collection of vertices or points and edges, connections between points. In our implementation, the cube is represented using eight vertices corresponding to its corners. These vertices are defined relative to the origin with coordinates of either minus one or one in each dimension, creating a cube centered at the origin with sides of length two units. The edges of the cube are defined as pairs of vertex indices, indicating which vertices should be connected to form the wireframe representation. This approach of separating geometric data vertices from topological data edges is a common practice in computer graphics. The implementation uses perspective projection, which creates the illusion of depth, making distant objects appear smaller. This is achieved through the project function that transforms 3D coordinates into 2D screen coordinates. The projection calculation involves several key components. Aspect ratio correction to account for non-square display dimensions field of view, scaling to control the viewing angle, z-coordinate adjustment by adding the camera distance, perspective division, where x and y coordinates are scaled inversely proportional to the z-distance. This projection technique creates a more realistic representation compared to orthographic projection, as it mimics how the human eye perceives depth in the real world. The formula uses a scale factor derived from the field of view and applies it to the x and y coordinates, dividing by the z distance to create the perspective effect. Rotation in 3D space is more complex than in 2D, as it can occur around any of the three principal axes. The implementation focuses on rotations around the x and y axis. Uh, these rotations are implemented using standard rotation matrices from linear algebra. I have a video just about that, link below. When rotating a point around an axis, we apply trigonometric functions to recalculate the coordinates in the affected planes. For example, when rotating around the x-axis, the y and z coordinates change while the x-coordinate remains constant. Similarly, rotation around y-axis affects the x and z coordinates while leaving the y-coordinate unchanged. The code implements rotation through two separate functions. We have rotate x and rotate y, each applying the appropriate rotation matrix to a given 3D point. These functions modify the point in place, which is an efficient approach when transforming multiple points. By applying these rotations sequentially to each vertex of our cube object, we create a smooth rotating animation effect. The angles incrementally change with each frame of the animation, creating continuous motion. We want to use ASCII characters for rendering and shading. The program uses a predefined set of characters with varying visual densities to represent different depth levels. The characters range from light to heavy, creating a visual gradient. Points farther from the camera are rendered with lighter characters, while closer points use denser characters. This technique creates a surprising amount of visual depth despite the limited medium of ASCII characters. Let's talk about drawing lines. Uh, it is a fundamental operation in computer graphics. The implementation uses Bresenham's line algorithm, which is efficient method for drawing lines on a discrete grid, such as computer screen. The algorithm works by determining which pixels best approximate a straight line between two points. It makes decision based on an error terms to minimize the distance between the real line and the pixel chosen to represent it. This approach is very efficient as it uses only integer addition, subtraction, and possibly bit shifting operations. Uh, for simplicity, I'm going to use a multiplication by two in this implementation instead. 
To make things clear, take a look at this example. First, we define our start and end points for the line. We'll be drawing from 2,3 to 8,7 on the 2D grid. Let's calculate the difference in the x and y directions, delta x and delta y. For this example, delta x is 6 and delta y is 4. We initialize our current position at the start point and compute an initial decision variable, which helps us to decide whether to move straight horizontally or diagonally up as we draw the line. On the left, we display key information, the start and end points, uh, and the computed differences. At the top right, we show the current pixel being processed, and at the top, the current value of the decision variable. Below that, we show the computation that initialized the decision variable. Now we step through the Bresnan algorithm. For each step, we highlight the current pixel being plotted on the grid. At each iteration, we check the decision variable, and if it's zero or positive, we move diagonally, both x and y increase, and the decision variable is adjusted accordingly. If it's negative, we move horizontally, only x increases, and the decision variable is updated differently. Each step's calculations and decisions are displayed on the right, so you can follow the logic in the real time. This process continues until we reach the end point, effectively drawing a straight line using only integer arithmetics. No floating point calculations required. It also implements a depth test where characters are only replaced if the new character represents a point closer to the viewer or has a higher visual density. To create smooth animations without flickering, the implementation uses a concept similar to double buffering. Instead of directly writing to the console for each pixel, it builds a complete frame in memory using a 2D vector of characters. Once the entire frame is constructed, it is outputted to the console as a single operation. This approach minimizes screen flickering that would occur if the console were updated incrementally during the rendering process. The technique is further optimized by pre-allocating a string buffer with sufficient capacity to hold the entire frame, uh, reducing memory allocation overhead during the animation. The implementation uses ANSI escape codes to control the console cursor and display. This sequence repositions the cursor to the home position, which is top left corner, before each frame is drawn, creating the illusion of a continuously updated display rather than scrolling text. To create smooth animation, the program introduces a deliberate delay between frames using sleep. This controls the frame rate and prevents the animation from running too quickly. The program implements several optimizations to improve performance. It disables IO synchronization to reduce overhead in console operations. Instead of outputting each character individually, it builds a complete string for the entire frame and outputs it in a single operation, significantly reducing the number of system calls. The program also hides the cursor during animation with this code to prevent visual distraction and potential performance impact from cursor movement. It ensures that the cursor is restored before the program exits by executing the cursor restoration code. Let's quickly go through the code. You can find a link to GitHub in the description. We begin with some standard library includes IOStream, Vector, CMath, and a few others to support our math, time handling, and terminal output. The display dimensions are defined by width and height, setting the ASCII screen size. This will control how the output is scaled in the terminal. Moving on, the cube size, camera distance, and field of view constants define our virtual 3D environment, specifically the size of the cube, the camera's position relative to the cube, and the field of view. For shading, a string of characters ranging from dark to light gives the cube depth when rendered. This is a clever ASCII-based Z-buffer trick. The code defines two core structures, point 3D for 3D coordinates and point 2D for 2D projections, including depth data. These help us map and display the cube on a 2D plane. A cube is defined using eight vertices and 12 edges, specified by their indices. This will later be projected and drawn in real time. The projection function is key. It uses perspective projection to convert 3D points into 2D screen coordinates. It takes into account the aspect ratio and field of view, ensuring the cube looks correct in our terminal window. Rotating functions, rotate x and y, apply basic 3D rotation transformations to the cube's vertices. These are animated frame by frame to create a spinning effect. The drawline function implements Bresson's ham algorithm to efficiently draw lines between projected 2D points. It also shades each line based on its depth to give the illusion of depth and lightning. Inside main function, IO synchronization is disabled for speed and the cursor is hidden to keep the animation smooth. A reusable buffer is used to optimize memory allocations during rendering. 
Each loop iteration clears the screen, rotates the cube, projects the vertices, draws the edges, and prints the result, all with depth aware shading. This creates a fluid 3D animation in the terminal using only characters. Rotation angles are incremented on every frame and the loop runs at roughly 200 frames per second using a small slip interval. Overall, this is a neat and concise example of low-level graphics programming in C++, showing how far you can go with just math, ASCII and a good rendering loop. The ASCII-based 3D rendering system demonstrates fundamental concepts in computer graphics programming without relying on specialized graphics hardware or libraries. By understanding the principles of 3D coordinate representation, perspective projection, rotation matrices and line drawing algorithms, you can gain insight into how modern graphics systems work at a conceptual level. That would be all for today. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and want to see more in the future, hit the subscribe button. See you next time.